of Bakersfield, California that has everything you love about racing. It's called Mesa Marin, and the brightest stars of NASCAR's Winston West Series are here this evening to battle it out for points, prestige, and over $98,000 in prize money. Stay tuned as the green flag drops for the Forum Marketing 200. Welcome to Mesa Marin Raceway in Bakersfield, California for NASCAR Winston West Racing. Tonight's main event, the Forum Marketing 200. Hello, everybody. David Stanfield with Larry Nast. And Larry, when I think about Mesa Marin, I think of racing since the mid-70s, late 70s. 1977, this place has been rocking with NASCAR Winston West action. There's been more races run on this racetrack for the NASCAR Winston West Series than any other racetrack. And tonight, we've got 24 of the fastest Winston West cars in the field. It's a toss-up. We don't know, really do not know by qualifying and practice who's going to win. Now, one key point you were talking about earlier is tires. Top 10 drivers have all qualified on Hoosiers. Now, that may not represent the top 10 in points, but the top 10 positions in today's starting field are all running on Hoosiers. The balance of the field will be on Goodyear's. Now, the qualifying was during the heat of the day, so was practice. When it cools down tonight, we're going to see who has the better tire, and that will become a big outcome in this race. A fellow by the name of Mr. Chase is leading the series. Has not won a race in 1999, but he is leading the series. But he's got some tough competitors. Kevin Harvick comes back from the NASCAR Crafts and Truck Series, and then he's got old-time nemesis Sean Woodside to deal with. Oddly enough, Harvick is driving Woodside's championship car, so we'll see what happens. Larry, those young guns have to take aim on Butch Gilliland, qualified number one on the Bud Pole, a new track record of 18.525 seconds. He's a two-time winner of this event, and last year it was Butch Gilliland winning the 1998 re-refined Oil 200. Here's a look at the top five qualifiers for the Forum Marketing 200. Up on top, it's Butch Gilliland with pole position. On the outside, Sean Woodside, followed by Bill Sedgwick, John Metcalf, and Jason Small. A total of 24 qualifiers, 100 miles long. That's 200 laps here on the half-mile paved speedway at Mesa Marin. It's the Forum Marketing 200, NASCAR Winston West Series race number six. Stay with us. And welcome back to Mesa Marin Raceway here in Bakersfield, California for the NASCAR Winston Rest Series race. And this is race number six in tonight's main event, the Forum Marketing 200. David Stanfield, Larry Nastin. Larry, let's set the field. First and foremost, Butch Gilliland, Ralph's Food for Less Coca-Cola Ford Taurus machine. And he had a fast time. Certainly did, 18.525. It's about 97 miles an hour average, meaning about 120 in the straightaways. He's alongside Sean Woodside in the number 16 out of Saugus, California. The Napa Martin Senior Chevrolet Monte Carlo. In row number two, Bill Sedgwick out of Acton, California, doing very well, the third fastest qualifier. John Metcalf out of Aurora, Colorado, will start in the fourth starting position. Now to row three. John Small, Bakersfield, California, in the Monte Carlo. 23, Brandon Ash from Umka, Oregon, will be in the Big Daddy's Barbecue Sauce for Taurus. Back on row number four, a surprise in the number seven car, Kevin Harvick. Out of Bakersfield, Kevin Harvick is qualifying in at seventh to eighth position. Number 11, David Gilliland, whose father will be in this one, and he's on the pole. Row number five, Kevin Richards. It's car number 85 out of Spokane, Washington. Wayne Jacks out of Las Vegas, Nevada will start in the 10th position. Row number six, Eric Norris, Dallas, Texas, car number 32. He'll be starting alongside El Cajon's number 12, Austin Cameron. Row number seven, Jerry Kane, car number 71. That's a forum marketing car. And number 65, rookie of the year leader, Sammy Potashnik out of Skidston, Missouri. Car number 57, Davey Lee Leniger out of Castle Rock, Colorado. Out of Sparks, Nevada, number three, Steve Portingay. Row number nine, Joe Bean, San Diego, California. And number 51 out of Greensboro, North Carolina, Rick Ware. Back to row number 10, Dean Kuhn, number 13 car out of Oceanside, California. The 76 car comes from Woodside, California, John Young in the Apex Racing Ford Taurus. Row number 11 on the inside, car number 20, Brendan Gaughan. And right alongside of him is the point leader in the NASCAR Winston West Series this year, number 18 out of Redding, California, Mike Chase. Row number 12, Jack Sellers, car number 15 out of Sacramento, California. And the 24th and final qualifying position out of Las Vegas, Nevada, Doc Faustina in the 61. We're looking for a green flag. Sean Woodside is carrying a camera. He's on the front row, car number 16. Back on the fourth row, Kevin Harvick. We go on board with him. And back to row number seven, Jerry Kane. 
And back on row number nine, Joe Bean, car number 77. Four cars with in-car cams are looking for a green flag right now. Lights out on the Dodge Intrepid. They pull it down onto the turn third apron. That is going for the pit lane right now. Here we go. Butch Gilliland will control the pace alongside of Sean Woodside. 200 laps, 100 miles, 24 qualifiers, and a purse near $100,000. And green flag flies. We're underway. Well, Butch Gilliland got a little bit loose as he headed down into turn number one, and he has assumed the lead. And coming in the second spot now, Billy Sedgwick out of Acton, California. Sedgwick, a former champion, has more wins at this racetrack than anybody racing tonight. Now they're going three wide into turn number four. Sedgwick putting some pressure on him and actually pushing the brakes out. Yellow flag flying right now. We've got some problems on the track. Let's take a look. Coming into turn number three and into the wall. Wayne Jacks, number six, went into the wall, had a huge problem. Problem. And uh, David Gilliland out of Chino Hills, that's Butch's son. Both of those cars look pretty damaged. We are under yellow flag conditions. The Foral Marketing 200 under yellow as the Dodge Intrepid leads. Larry, let's take a look at point of view from Jerry Kay. We're going to go on board, and ahead of him, the number six car will be Wayne Jacks. And off and to the right, the number 11 car, David Gilliland. There's Jacks right now. Jacks has an inside line, and two cars trying to take the same line. They both go up into the wall from a different angle you can see just entering turn number three they tangled and right now it looks like Wayne Jacks is gonna make it back into the pits under his own power take a look totally fro frozen front left tire a lot of damage to that car but he's gonna pull into the pits meanwhile David Gilliland number 11 car he's gonna need some help getting his machine off the track a lot of work is going to have to be done on Wayne Jack's car as we are under yellow right now. Lap number three of 200, the Forum Marketing 200. Right now, it's Butch Gilliland leading, followed by Bill Sedgwick, Sean Woodside, John Metcalf, and Brendan Ash. Stay with us. Welcome back to Bakersfield, California. NASCAR, Winston West Racing, the Forum Marketing 200. Well, we've been under yellow since the beginning. Lap number one, the yellow flag flew, a tangle between Wayne Jacks and David Gilliland, and that has brought out a lot of debris on the track and then a lot of action in the pits. Right now, Butch Gilliland leads Bill Sedgwick, Sean Woodside, John Metcalf, Brendan Ash. We are looking for a green right now. Again, it's a half mile track. We're going 200 miles and the green flag flies and take a look at Butch Gilliland. He's at home on this track. He is the defending champion. Gilliland with a good jump on the green flag followed by Bill Sedgwick who's making him an honest man. Talk about the young guns in this race. The veterans are out front. Gilliland, 41 years old. Sedgwick, 45 years old. And they are putting on quite a show. From the old guns on the track, let's go to the young guns, or at least there's two of them down there. Brent Weber, third man in the pits. He's along with David Gilliland. Brent? Not the way David Gilliland wanted his first Winston West event here at Bakersfield to happen. Turn three, what went on? Uh, just one of the early racing incidents. Um, you know, we were two abreast for the start, and a uh, guy got into the back of us a little bit and put us into the wall, but that's just... Um, you know, the overall pitch is still really great. We, were, we ran really good in practice. We qualified really well. Um, we got to thank Jim's Towing for coming on this week and uh, Rouse for giving us the opportunity to race. And uh, we'll be back. We just got to, um, you know, fine tune it. And we're still looking pretty good. We were still very happy with the, the, the day. Now, unfortunately for you, you're back in your old accustomed position, and that's rooting on Butch. Yeah, this way here, um, you know, I'm sure he's upset that I'm out of the race, but he's probably a little glad that I'll be able to help him a little bit. So, um, you know, I'll do the best we can do for him, and that's what we're here for. We'll try and win. Thank you, Brent. Well, David Gilliland has a very positive outlook, seeing how disastrous that first lap was. Gilliland out of the race, but his father continues and racing action is fast and furious and Sedgwick, he's on a mission. Sedgwick now trying to find his way out. Now he backs off a little bit, David, going down the back straightaway, a little bit of breathing room. Gilliland knows he's there, but just as soon as we say that, here comes Sedgwick trying to get to the front, nothing doing. 
Down the front straightaway, completing lap number 12 here at Mesa Marin Raceway in Bakersfield, California. The half mile paved speedway is coming alive tonight in beautiful conditions. It is gorgeous out here. Temperatures today were up in the 90s. Now it's about 70 degrees and it's cooling off quite nice as we have some good racing. Woodside not able to bring the Napa Chevrolet up any closer to the Dupont race car of Bill Sedgwick, but Sedgwick now trying to find a line underneath Gilliland as they go down the back straightaway here. Mason Marin Raceway, one of 110 NASCAR Winston Racing facilities in the country, and it's the only racetrack that can boast a television package for its NASCAR Winston Racing Series. It's one of the reasons these NASCAR Winston West cars love to come to this racetrack. It's so well lit up at night. It's such a great racing surface, and the Collins family just continues to sink money into this jewel of the Kern County here in Bakersfield, California. Not much happening back in the pack with Kevin Harvick. Number seven car out of Bakersfield, California. He is still running in the sixth position. We're watching the battle up front, and it is a good one. They're already coming across some lower back markers, and they're making some quick work, and look who's moving up. I don't think it's any surprise that Woodside wants to get and make a statement as soon as he can, but you know, I'm not so concerned about Harvick running back there that far, David. They've got a long, long way to go. It's a good night. It's, a, it's cooling down. The guys are going to get pretty comfortable and just as we say that, Woodside starts to push on Sedgwick down the back straightaway. Woodside on the inside, the number 16 car. Napa Senior Chevrolet. Now remember, Bill McAnally stepped aside. He's the owner of the race car. McAnally raced it for 10 years and decided he wanted to get back to Victory Circle. Well, he put Gary Smith in the car last year, won once, as we've got one into the wall now. The 76 goes into the wall, and we've got a yellow flag. John Young out of Woodside, California, goes into the fence, and he's got some flame coming out from the back, David. That, I believe, is where the fuel cell is. Absolutely, but the way the fuel cells are designed, um, all you're going to get is any fuel that was in the filler neck, and that's probably about all they've used here in lap number 18 of 200 in the Ford Marketing 200. Well, let's see what happens, and uh, if he's going to pull in, I think he uh, needs to be checked. He's probably rubbing on that back left tire, and it's going to uh, blow any minute unless something happens. It's John Young out of Woodside, California, the Apex Racing, the Apex Racing Ford Taurus, number 76, and he pulls in, and his crew's going to go to work. And they're going to try to get that thing back. But what the problem here is if the filler neck is bad, they're not going to be able to get this thing fixed. So they've got to make sure it's all right. So John Young, who qualified 20th, started on the outside of row number 10. A one-car incident. Don't know if he uh, was tapped by somebody or you know, pushed out to the outside into the marbles or maybe a little oil on the track. He is on Goodyear's, and they're changing the left side tires, or at least checking out and doing a little minor body and fender work right now. The tail aerodynamics obviously have changed, and the key here is can they put fuel in the car? Right now, changing the tires. Crew chief Jerry Hand is under control right now. And car owner driver John Young is hoping for the best. A 200 lap race, normally the first pit stop would come about lap number 80, but right now they're gonna have to figure out when they're gonna come back in to get some fuel in this car, indeed if they can. So they saw the damage and now they're gonna have to formulate a plan for the rest of the race. And there's still plenty of racing ahead. John Young gonna do some catch up playing right now. Pedal to the metal, going to try to catch up with the rest of the pack before it turns green. We are in lap number 21 under yellow. It's Butch Gilliland, Bill Sedgwick, and Sean Woodside leading the Forum Marketing 200. Welcome back to Mesa Marin Raceway, the Forum Marketing 200 NASCAR Winston West Racing here in Bakersfield, California. Brent Weber, along with Larry Naston, myself, David Stanfield, we're set to go racing, looking for the green. There's John Young, he's back and racing, but in the back of the pack because of that incident. Green flag gonna fly here, and we're gonna go on board with Kevin Harvick, number seven. Harvick currently in sixth spot, and he dives to the inside of John Metcalf, moving up into the fifth position. Take a look at the racing going on now, the top 10 cars are bumper to bumper. And here comes Kevin Harvick in the seven. Harvick goes down low to the inside. He'll move into spot number five. Harvick out of Bakersfield, California, the 23-year-old. 
Car number seven qualified seventh, and now he's going to start making his move. A lot of people here thought Harvick would qualify that thing on the pole. That car was a championship contending car the year that Kevin Harvick won the championship. And now, oddly enough, he sits in the ride that Sean Woodside piloted just a year ago. It, like we said earlier, it doesn't surprise me. Harvick has learned a lot about patience. And that's one thing you need here at Mason Wren. This track can pull up and bite you very quickly. Right now, the only thing getting bite here is Butch Gilliland's tires as he's got that Hoosier driven forward up to the front. And look at Kevin Harvick. He is being hounded as well. It's not easy up front. If he uses his mirrors, he sees a lot of people that are hungry. That 14 car is Jason Small, 19-year-old driver out of Bakersfield. Jason Small has had a stint in the NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Series. He's also a permanent member of, a member of the NASCAR Winston Racing Series. And now Jason Small trying his hand at the NASCAR Winston West Series. And he's had some impressive outings on the 14 car from right here in Bakersfield, California. He is right sandwiched in between John Metcalf and one car ahead of them is the man, Kevin Harvick. He won the tour race last night here at Mason Wren Raceway. So been some good racing from our guys in the top. Right now, Butch Gilliland leads. On to lap number 26 they go into turn number one, exiting one into turn two, down back straight away. This is a great track, 15 degree banking on the turns on the straightaways, just five or six degrees banking. And uh, five or six degrees doesn't sound like a lot, but you can roll all the way down, no problem. It is a, a very bank racetrack they go into the corners here there's a stripe as they enter the corner you can see it there on the on the tv set and well, i'll tell you what they hit that turn and stand on it that's about how you have to get around mason Marin. right now gillen out in front sedwick runs in spot number two woodside in spot number three brandon ash in spot number four and here comes kevin harder he's getting hammered on by the zero five remax chevrolet the rookie john metcalf Butch Gilliland, the number one car, Ford Taurus, the pole sitter, 41 years old out of Chino, California. Looking strong, but it is a long race. Best finish, well, he's won this type of racing here 11 times. NASCAR Winston West Racing, he is a veteran and obviously the champion in 1997. And he's a very good driver and he's got a lot going for him. He's got a great crew down there. Now it looks like Harvick has gotten by Metcalf. Harvick taking the number seven deep into turn number three, but John Metcalf really putting some pressure on him. Brandon Ash, meanwhile, in the Big Daddy's Barbecue Sauce entry, runs right ahead of him in the Pontiac and being chased by yet another Pontiac of Kevin Harvick, but Metcalf now stands on it and trying to take the position back. Metcalf moves to the inside. He's going to make Harvick an honest man. Let's see what Harvick's going to do. Well, Harvick may make an honest man out of Metcalf. Harvick way up on the outside and retains the lead. Good job by Kevin Harvick. There is the number seven car, Kevin Harvick, 23 years old, out of Bakersfield, spending lots of time in North Carolina, currently number six in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. He's got a couple second place finishes. He is a talented driver. Yeah, a lot of people talk about Kevin Harvick, and uh, it's just a matter of a few weeks, maybe a few races before he wins his first NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race. Sean Woodside takes the McAnally Racing Napa Auto Parts Martin Senior Paint Chevrolet and tries to go up with the DuPont Stainmaster car of Bill Sedgwick, the 44, gets Sideways, here comes Woodside now, side by side across the stripe, going into one for spot number two. And Woodside really takes a tight line on the inside. We've got a little action and we've got some some fireworks it looks like they're going on there. Yeah, it looks like a little unburned fuel getting pushed out there as uh, we have one collected in the wall, the number 13 car ends up inside of the crash wall. Number 13, Dean Kuhn out of Oceanside, California, the Lucas Oil Team five-star Chevrolet Monte Carlo had a problem. He got tangled up as well with several other cars down that back straightaway. Jack Sellers out of Sacramento involved in that one, Cowboy Jack. There's a good shot of Jack Sellers in his Coca-Cola entry. And uh, unfortunately, we've had a couple of them get banged up, but it's been some very close racing all the way through. Yellow flag flies right now. Pace car is on the track, and everybody is in line, single file, as the course workers are going to take a look and try to clear the debris, as well as these two cars, Dean Kuhn number 13 out of Oceanside. He started row 10 on the inside, qualified 19th. 
and uh, definitely some fluid dripping out of his car. And Jack Sellers, number 15, the Sacramento car. He started row number 12 on the inside, qualified 23rd. Let's back up a little bit. Four cars involved in this incident. Number 85 on the track is Kevin Richards, trying to get restarted there. Davey Lee Linegar flies off the track in the number 57 car. Then we saw Dean Kuhn. He went into the wall and actually backs up and takes out Jack Sellers. Take a look, rolling off the wall. Sellers gets in a little slippery, and then Seller hits the wall head on. And down lower right, you're going to see Davy Lee Linegar still trying to maintain control of his Remax car, the number 57 vehicle. A lot of action here, and you can see single file. They're finding a way through all the debris right now as we are under yellow at Mesa Marin. On board we go, Jerry Kane looking for a radio, trying to get a traffic report. It is a mess out there as he weaves through the, the debris here at Mesa Marin. On the other side of the track, Jack Sellers out of Sacramento, California, has a fire going on, possibly from the brakes, but the fire crew is there trying to put it out, and Dean Kuhn, he is in bad position as well. His car looks extremely damaged. We'll be right back with more racing from the Forum Marketing 200 here in Bakersfield. Welcome back to Bakersfield, California, and the NASCAR Winston West Series. Forum Marketing 200 at Mesa Marin, yellow flag flying, four cars involved in an incident. Lots of debris on the track. Davy Lee Linegar, Dean Kuhn, Jack Sellers, and Kevin Richards. And for Dean Kuhn, his car is heavily damaged, and his crew chief, Dan Chitnett, is standing by with our Brent Weber. Let's go down to the pits. Well, Dean Kuhn got in a little bit of trouble. Somebody else's trouble made trouble for you. Well, it looked to us like uh, another car turned around. Dean tried to go up around him, got up in the marbles, and it got loose, and then he just got gathered up by some other cars that turned around. So it looks like all the damage just came as an aftermath from some of the other cars. What's the car look like now? Well, from right here, it looks like it knocked the differential out of the back end of it. We'll know as soon as they get it off the track. I can see some gear oil coming out of it, so I'm not sure. All right, thanks a lot. You got it. Oh my gosh, lots of damage here. You know, you've always got to look on the bright side, think you're gonna fix it, but there is some serious damage to both Dean Kuhn and Jack Seller's cars. They're gonna be towed off. Right now, let's go back to the pits. Jack Seller's crew chief is John Krebs. He's standing by with Brent Weber. Brent? Well, it happened right in front of him, and that's, uh, I guess, if you want to see what happened, you, you had the best view in the house for the worst thing to happen for your day. Unfortunately true, yes. What, what exactly happened? He kind of ran into somebody else's trouble there. Yeah, uh, 13 car uh, spun out on us and the uh, leaked some oil and we got into that, so unfortunately we're going home for today. Most importantly, anytime the ambulance is out there, we want to know how he's doing. Oh, he's doing all right. We checked right away, make sure he's all right, so he's doing fine. He's uh, out of the car already, so no problems with Jack. All right, better luck next time. Okay, thanks. Standard precautionary procedures into the ambulance goes. Jack Sellers out of Sacramento, California. The Bear Automotive Chevrolet Monte Carlo out of the running. There's the number 13 car as well. That is Dean Kuhn out of Oceanside, California, putting his machine right next to the transport truck. The night is completed. Tough luck for them. Under yellow flag, we remain. Pace car out on the track, and uh, they're just clearing things away. The number one car, he is our leader right now, Butch Gilliland, the 41-year-old out of Chino Hills, California. He's the NASCAR Winston West Series champion of 1997, and last year was his second victory here at Mesa Marin, and it wasn't an easy one. He had quite a ride. Well, you saw a victory circle. Let's go back. First of all, he started with a spin. Yeah, a spin like that would put him in the back of the pack but he didn't give up hope. Into the pits, strategically timed pit stops, a flawless crew, and he actually was a lap down at one point, but came back and got in the hunt. Here he challenges Gary Smith for the lead. On the outside, Butch Gilliland. He makes the move. A key this evening, one year ago, was his deep braking. He had great brakes a phenomenal crew, and obviously a fast car. And when the checker flag flew, it was Butch Gilliland with yet another victory. And a well-deserved wave to the crowd 
in Victory Circle. There's the pace car, lights are out, looking for a green flag on this lap. Our leader is Butch Gilliland, the number six car. Take a look, you can't see number six, but he is on the inside, three rows back. That's Wayne Jacks, back in track and running again. There he is, Wayne Jacks, first lap's incident, and he is obviously gonna be down to the leaders. Green flag flies, it is Butch Gilliland, followed by Sean Woodside, the number 16 car, the number 44 of Bill Sedgwick, then Brandon Ash, as well as Kevin Harvick. Take a look at Gilliland, pull away from the field. Here comes Small now, David number 14, Jason Small making big moves on the outside. Small driving in a, the no man's land here at Maserman, way up high. Keep your eyes on the number 14, the white and blue of Jason Small as he continues to make his way back through the pack. He is all over the back of Kevin Harvick. He's on top of Brandon Ash. Harvick now dives to the inside. Here comes Small. Small now looking for a way to the outside. Harvick dives down to the horn of the line on the inside, but nothing doing. He can't make a move on Brandon Ash as they head into turn number one. Brandon Ash, car number 23, the fourth Thunderbird out of Oregon. His best finishes in this type of racing, a couple of second places. He wants to do better than that tonight. Oh, he's going to have his work cut out for him because Butch Gilliland is on rails. But there you see Brandon Ash now chasing Billy Sedgwick, number 44. And Kevin Harvick, the number seven, runs right behind him. Now, Larry, Butch Gilliland has not had the greatest seasons thus far, but he's having a great race tonight. He's raced five times thus far and only two top ten finishes. And all of a sudden, he comes to Mesa Marin, and he is dominating. Fantastic race. Butch Gilliland leads Sean Woodside in the number 16 Chevy Monte Carlo. The 28-year-old making him work for that lead position. We'll be right back with more action. Stay with us. Welcome back to Bakersfield, California. NASCAR Winston West Series for a Marketing 200. Larry Nastin, Brent Weber, and I'm David Stanfield. Our top three is the top three, how they qualified. Butch Gelliland, number one out front in the Ford Taurus. He set a track record in qualifying, 18.525 seconds around this half mile oval. A speed of 97.166 mile per hour average. He leads Sean Woodside, the 28 year old out of Saugus, California, the number 16 car. And Larry, track owner Marion Collins really knows how to promote a great race. They'll be back here one more time, too, in October. The Winston West will join us again as we have the 24th annual October Classic here at Maserman Raceway. Brandon Ash, Sean, or Brandon Ash and Kevin Harvick and Jason Small and John Metcalf are having their own little Grand Prix of their own. These four guys have been so close together. Brandon Ash leads them in the Big Daddy's Barbecue Sauce entry, and right behind him, Kevin the Kid Harvick. It's Gilliland, Woodside, Sedgwick, Brandon Nash, and Kevin Harvick, the number seven car, Bernie Hilbert Racing, the Pontiac Grand Prix. Down in the pits with Brent Weber is Dick Jennings. Dick Jennings has been watching his guy pick his spots and got Kevin up to fifth now. A little bit of mess out there, but he stayed cleared of it so far. Yeah, he's a hell of a driver. I mean, he watches where he's going. He's been around the trucks now, and he's just calling the shots. I'm just in here waiting for him to come to me. It's pretty funny knowing that he's been right in those trucks all year long and he comes out here as if he just woke up from a nap and went out for a walk. He's a Bakersfield local. He knows this place like the back of his hand. He's really good here. Gilliland and Woodside lead this race in the number five spot is Kevin Harvick. Car number seven, he is the NASCAR Winston West Series champion of 1998 and he's looking for a win tonight. You see there, Kevin Harvick's got glowing brake rotors in the front. Brakes are very crucial at this racetrack. Around the back markers goes our leader, Butch Gilliland, who hasn't had the greatest seasons thus far. He's got two top ten finishes. Very uncharacteristic of Butch Gilliland. But it just shows that the competition in the NASCAR Winston West Series is really climbing up the ladder. The equipment's better, David. The crews are better. The haulers are better. The marketing is better. And for most of these guys, the sponsorship is a lot better. And that's made racing just tremendous on the NASCAR Winston West Trail. Now for Kevin Harvick, is this his first uh, Winston West? race. No, no, no. Harvick has raced uh, last year and stuff, but it's his first one this oh, year. Oh, first one this year. Right, I mean. because of the truck series. Exactly right. But uh, Kevin Harvick's a threat. Now, remember, we talked to Kevin earlier today. He has never won in a Winston West car here, although he's got in the teens and wins in the Winston Racing Series and the NASCAR Federalized Southwest Tour. So he's no stranger to Victory Circle, but what's strange is to drive a 3,500-pound Winston Cup-style car here at Mesa Marin. Now Jason Small is hometown high school hero trying to bury himself in the 
the inside. There's Harvick. Both of these kids, Jason Small in the 14 and Kevin Harvick in the 7, became NASCAR Winston Racing Series stars while they were seniors in high school. Kevin Harvick, 23 years old out of Bakersfield. Jason Small, 19 years old out of Bakersfield. Quite a duo going on right now. The crowd is loving every minute of it. And it's a good crowd on hand for tonight's race. Memorial Day weekend, the busiest race weekend of the year. Of course, the Indianapolis 500, the Coca-Cola 600 in Charlotte, and the Winston Racing Series tracks all over the country doing business tonight. But right here, the NASCAR Winston West 4 Marketing 200 is getting hot and heavy. Out in front, it's a pretty good lead for Butch Gilliland. The real battle is third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. That's where the battling's going on on the racetrack. And a totally different line for Kevin Harvick as the rest of the pack. Mm -hmm. Harvick's been around here a lot of different ways and a lot of different times. Now you see Jason Small, who tries to get the number 14, Ken Small construction entry, up a little bit closer onto the six of, of, of Kevin Harvick. But that car, number seven, six meaning rear end of Harvick, he's trying to make a move on the inside, nothing doing. You want to get in the guy's draft, and believe it or not, David, the draft does play a role here at Mason Raceway. This is one of the faster half-mile racetracks these cars will run on all year. Butch Gilliland has a comfortable lead right now, but if you know anything about Sean Woodside and Bill Sedgwick, that might change. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Forum Marketing 200 NASCAR Winston West Series at Bakersfield, California, Mesa Marin Raceway. Got Larry Naston, Brent Weber, I'm David Stanfield, and our race is well underway. Our leader is Butch Gilliland back in the pack, though. Some young guns are going at it. Kevin Harvick, the number seven car. Jason Small, the number 14 car. Out front, however, it's Butch Gilliland, who had a comfortable lead, but coming on strong is Sean Woodside, the number 16 car. Sean Woodside, the Napa Senior Chevrolet Monte Carlo, owned by Bill McAnally. Now the crew chief is Chris Dietrich. He is standing by with Brett Weber in the pits. Let's go down to Brent. If any car out here, if any team out here is going to benefit the most from a great pit stop, it's you guys. And uh, when are you going to go for it? Well, we're kind of feeling tires out right now. We'll, gonna, we'll do it on a yellow, almost assuredly. Uh, right around lap 100, probably. He's not, he really doesn't like to run second. He told us that he really wants to go for it, get another win, and uh, he had that sense that he's kind of avoided the trouble. It's been nice to be out in front of it so far. We're definitely saving the tires. We're, we're, we're trying to, to, to see what it's gonna do at the end. We don't wanna lean on the tires too hard right now. Right before we come in, we'll see what we got. I know he doesn't like to run second, but we do want to win, and this is, I think, where we got to be right now. To do it. What has he said about the one car in front of him? Because it looks like Gilliland's car is running really well. Has he said anything? Does he have the confidence he can get him? Oh, he, he, he caught him. He let him go. We just, we're just working on the, the big picture right now. So we're right. a little early in the race. So Big picture still to come. Well, it's still early in the race. They better tell that to Sean Woodside. He is taking an inside line and being very aggressive. Butch Gilliland still in the lead, but not for long if they hold this right now. The big picture now looking for a new leading man, Sean Woodside, pressuring heavily. Coming out of turn three, turn four, down the inside, slower traffic making Gilliland back off, and Woodside is our new leader. Sean Woodside, 28 years old in the number 16 Chevy Monte Carlo has taken over the lead. On board with Woodside, you're either accelerating or braking, and he stands on it once more. Number 16, Sean Woodside leads Butch Gilliland, number one. And not far off the pace, number 14, Jason Small, seven, Kevin Harvick, and 05, John Metcalf mixing it up. And now Small trying to move in. Here comes Metcalf, they're trying to go three wide. Take a look at Kevin Harvick, the number seven car, staying high in his line, but he still holds that line. And we see Kevin uh, Richards in the Monaco Enterprises Chevrolet now, and the black number 85 start to get into the fray. And looks like Small now has been able to complete his pass on Kevin Harvick. Metcalf's going to follow Harvick in the high line. It has not been easy for Jason Small, the 19-year-old, car number 14, the Chevy Monte Carlo, finally makes that move and moves up as a position into the fifth spot. 
you know, Jason Small's got a lot of laps here this year, and uh, this track is still relatively good. They've had a, a fair share of NASCAR Winston Racing Series events, and then, of course, the big 300-lap Dodge California Truck Stop 300 for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series that was won by Rick Corelli. And by the way, Rick Corelli's teammates are David Lee Linegar and John Metcalf. Very happy to report Rick Corelli is fine. David, I had the chance to talk to Rick Corelli on the telephone. Those of you who watched the Memphis race know that uh, Rick had an accident, was airlifted to uh, the Elvis Presley Trauma Center in Memphis, Tennessee. Happy to report Rick told me he's going to be back in his race truck in the next few weeks. And the uh, entire Remax Chevrolet crew that is here tonight, very happy about that news about the High Plains Drifter out of Denver, Colorado, Rick Corelli, who spent many years in the NASCAR Winston West Series. In fact, would be racing tonight if that injury had not happened. So we wish Rick all the best and a yeah, speedy recovery. Sean Woodside continues to lead, 71 laps completed, 129 to go. Stay with us. Welcome back to Bakersfield, California, and the Forum Marketing 200. David Stanfield along with Larry Nast. And Larry, let me ask you, tires and the one fuel stop are critical tonight, aren't they? Believe it or not, Mesa Marin can turn into a fuel race because we really don't have very many incidents on this racetrack, so it stays green for a long time. Lap number 73 in the books. Our leader, Sean Woodside, 28 years old, out of Saugus, California. The Chevy Monte Carlo number 16. And take a look at his inside line, Boy, dealing with, with some lappers. Now, you had a little bit of fun with Woodside this afternoon. And Woodside was pulling some cables at the Long Beach Grand Prix and kind of freaked you out seeing Woodside at a car race without a fire suit on. What, what was that all that about? I was expecting him to be one of the racers. And I go, what are you doing here <laughs> out of uniform, buddy? Put on that fire suit and go race, and they need you out there. That's right. But he said, nope, can't do it. Wasn't the NASCAR Winston West Series. I'll wait till you come up here in Mason Marin in the month of May. What a great kid he is. Hyundai. Butch Gilliland, yes, he's making an honest man out of John Woodside right now. You'd think that he's pulling away, then all of a sudden, here comes Butch right up, right up on him. Uh, you know what they say, to finish first, you got to first finish, and that's exactly what Gilliland's planning on. He can go ahead and let Woodside be the rabbit. He just can't let him get way out in front of him, and right now, looks like the 76 holding him at bay. 76, of course, being driven tonight. That's uh, John Young, who got in trouble a little bit earlier tonight. And now Young, uh, we don't know if he's going to be able to get fuel in that car or not on the first fuel stop. Getting very close, though, to tire windows and fuel windows here. About 80, 85 to 90 laps were expected to see a pit stop. And we'll see when these guys come in. Remember, that makes a big, big difference in track position, especially if they have to make a green flag pit stop. We've been green since about lap number 35, so we've run a long time under green. And it seems to me that Small's car is getting stronger, but here's the man who is strong right now, the Bill McAnally, Napa Auto Parts, Martin Senior Chevrolet out in front. And Chris Diedrich, uh, the crew chief, 20-year-old Saugus native, Sean Woodside in the 16 car doing a great job right now as we take a look at some of the other drivers. That's number 23, Ford Tebert, Brandon Ash. He's another talented young man and out of Oregon. That's right. Brandon Ash has come on the scene big time, and he is real strong. Brandon's got a great team with him. That's what's helping him. He's got a lot of experience down there. And uh, Brandon Ash, one of the nice kids that we've got now. Ed Ash is working with him, and Ed's been building motors for the Winston West for such a long time, so it's no stranger to him to have a good power plant under the hood, and that's what you need. There's a good shot of Brandon now and Jason Small going after each other here at Mason Wren out of turn four. Jason Small, car number 14, qualified fifth, and alongside him was uh, the number 23 car, Brandon Ash. Two great privateers with bright futures. Let's jump back to the front of the pack. We've got Sean Woodside leading. Bill Sedgwick and Butch Gilliland going at it right now, and it is Sedgwick who's taken over the second spot. Our leader, Sean Woodside, number 16, now followed by Bill Sedgwick, number 44, and Butch Gilliland, number one. All three are front runners on Hoosier tires. This late into the race before that first critical pit stop, you think, well, their tires might be given out. They're spacing themselves out quite a bit. They're being a little more conservative. And they are waiting for the key moment to come into the pits, get outside tires as well as some fuel. On board we go with Joe Bean. Bean having a moment right there and loses a spot, but nonetheless maintains. On board we go one more time. Joe Bean driving a good race. Aboard the Rudolph Food CPR Ford Taurus qualified 17th. 
And he's still in the hunt as well. Just a little bit further back in the pack. Our leader, Sean Woodside, the number 16 car. Woodside, the Napa Martin Senior Chevrolet Monte Carlo. With the lead, looking to come into the pits in the next couple of laps. Again, Hoosier tires running one, two, and three right now. For Woodside, he has won the NASCAR Winston West Series. Well, he's won six races, and he's looking for his seventh here tonight. It's very clear to see. He's got a job ahead of him. Billy Sedgwick, though, right out in back of him in the number 44. Sedgwick currently running in spot number two. Butch Gilliland in spot number three. Spot number four is Brandon Ash. In spot number five, the young former football star from Bakersfield. It's number 14, Jason Small. Still looking for our first pit stop, our only one for fuel and tires. And oh, an incident on the track. John Metcalf aboard the Chevy Monte Carlo qualified fourth in the second row is completely stopped on the track. And it looks like possibly two front flat tires. For sure, the front right is flat and the rim is bent. And not sure how that happened. He gets himself off the course. And take a look at that wheel and that tire. Inside, that's not red paint, that is a red hot disc. Yes, they do some heavy braking here on this track and obviously some heavy acceleration as well. And we're gonna have the fire crew out here to check on John Metcalf out of Aurora, Colorado. And a good qualifying time. This is his first year in NASCAR Winston West Series. In 1997, he was the Featherlight Southwest Series Rookie of the Year champion. And uh, take a look, something has ignited under there. From Kevin Harvick's point of view, ahead of him is John Metcalf, 05. I believe his front right tire just blew. This is uh, unfortunate because uh, he was approaching probably a pit stop where he'd get outside tires and some fuel, but Tough luck for John Metcalf. Our top three right now, Sean Woodside, Bill Sedgwick, and Butch Gilliland as we continue from Bakersfield, California with the Forum Marketing 200 at Mesa Marin Raceway. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Forum Marketing 200 NASCAR Winston West Series Racing, Bakersfield, California, Mesa Marin. The yellow flag is going to bring up a flurry of action inside the pits. And here comes our leader, number 16, Sean Woodside. And they're looking for some fuel to finish this race as well as possibly outside tires. And yes, Woodside with outside tires. He did have the track record. It was back on October 17th of 1998, a 96.629 mile per hour lap here, but he's having trouble getting out of the box. Good shot now, but listen to this. Woodside rolls past the, the box. Now remember, there is a rule. If they, if they did any work on that car, David, when he was past the box, they're gonna bring him back in, but NASCAR has not given any uh, information yet but if you go past your pit box you can get in trouble now let's take a look at how they came out of the pits it looks like brandon ash's crew is going to get him out second quick but look at this number seven kevin harvick here's sedgwick now leaving pit road but it looks like the battle off the pit road was really won by brandon ash as he's gained a lot of momentum Sean Woodside actually had to put it in reverse to get out from the pits after, I believe, outside tire change. Now, there was a left side tire, a right side tire change for these guys. Now, what they'll do under yellow is take two. So here's the way it's going to line up. The 23 will be in spot number two. That's Brandon Ash. Right behind him is Kevin Harvick. That's not what Woodside wanted to see. I guarantee you there are other people here that Woodside would, or Harvick would rather see in his rear view than Woodside. The way it's going to shake out, we're going to see... Uh, a couple of lap cars, Jack Sellers is going to be up there, the number 12 car, Austin Cameron out of El Cajon who had his fair share of problems, and actually Austin uh, Cameron is going to be shown as the leader right now, so we'll see when they come back around if the scoring pylon stays the same, that means Austin Cameron's crew ended up winning the battle off of Pitt Road, and that would be heroic. Right in front of Austin Cameron is the number 61 car of Leonard Doc Festina. Chevy Monte Carlo, he is a lap down and once we get underway, he will be to the inside. And then on the outside, our fast boys, the leader Austin Cameron, Sean Woodside, Brandon Ash, and Kevin Harvick, one, two, three, and four. Now this uh, yellow flag was caused by John Metcalf, one car incident, probably a blown outside tire, tough luck 
for Metcalf, who had a great qualifying. He qualified in the fourth spot, but his night has ended. We'll be back for a green flag with the Forum Marketing 200. Stay with us. Welcome back to the 1999 NASCAR Winston West Series. This is race number six of 14 at Mesa Marin Raceway, Bakersfield, California. Another race coming up in October. Check that, you wanna be here for that great event. Right now we've got Austin Cameron, the car number 12 out front, and we're not sure if he really made it into the pits. We think he still has to pit. So uh, he's got a lead right now, but we don't know if he's gonna be able to hold on to it. Sean Woodside, number 16, is currently in second spot when we go green, followed by the number 23 for T-Bird of Brandon Ash. Then comes Kevin Harvick in the number seven Pontiac. And Butch Gilliland, number one. Butch Gilliland earlier today set the track record. A quick one, 18.525 seconds around this half mile paved oval. And right now he's looking strong. Lights are out in the pace car, the Haddad Dodge Avenger. And David, this is where it's gonna get wild. Now remember, the number 12 of Austin Cameron is in the lead, but he did not come in and pit. The Marcon Creative Touch Chevrolet Monte Carlo qualified for this race in the number 12 position. The story now, or the question now, David, is how long can he go without coming in for a pit stop? He obviously needed some track position, that's what he got, but he's gonna have to come in for tires and fuel. Look at the number 12 car on the outside from El Cajon, California, Austin Cameron, the number 12 car, followed by the number 16, Sean Woodside. They are on the outside, that's number one and two, followed by the number 23 car, Brandon Ash, and the fourth Thunderbird. Here they come, green flag flies, and they all break loose. Kevin Harvick may have been the recipient of a great start here. Harvick now, Brandon Nash has gotten a back around him, but Harvick had a shot at him. Here they come down into turn number three. Katie, bar the door, here comes Harvick to the inside. Harvick down on the Hornaday line, and he is trying to make a move, but Brandon Nash is too strong. Here's a challenge for the lead, going to the front, Sean Woodside in the Napa Auto March Chevrolet. Woodside makes the move to the inside. Austin Cameron now in the number 12 cars in second, and he is being pressured heavily by Brandon and Ash and, and Kevin Harvick. Harvick climbing up to the outside banking here at Mesa Marin. Harvick very comfortable high here at Mesa Marin. He's been running around this racetrack one line higher than everybody. Oh, oh this time Cameron caused the problem. They get together. Brendan got in there as well. We almost had a big one right there in turn two. Up front is Sean Woodside, followed by the number 23 car, Brandon Ash. <laughs> the back boy. All heck is breaking loose. We almost had a big one right there out of turn two. That was a great piece of driving by Brandon Gunn and by Austin Cameron. And of course, uh, there's a little love tap right there as Kevin Harvick and Austin Cameron getting together right now. They're trying to get by Kevin Richards, the number 85 Marcon entry. Monaco Enterprises, Penske Shock Chevy Monte Carlo of Kevin Richards from Spokane, Washington. Well, had a pretty good ride tonight. He's a lap down, but he's got his work cut out for him. And whoa, did Cameron get sideways. Sean Woodside, our leader, number 16, followed by Brandon Ash, number 23, Butch Gilliland, showing in the number three spot, and then Austin Cameron, number 12, and Kevin Harvick, number seven, and nobody's given anybody an inch out there. Everything turning around now. We go back to yellow. Here's the way it is officially. Right now, number 16, Sean Woodside, your leader, Brandon Ash in spot number two, Butch Gilliland in spot number three. Kevin Richards made his lap back up, so the Monaco Enterprises Penske Shock Chevy Monte Carlo is in fourth, oh. spot number five. Oh, and we got a big one down on the front straightaway. And that looks like Mike Chase, the point leader, got damaged. And so did Brendan Gaughan in the number 20 Orleans Hotel and Casino Monte Carlo. Injured just coming through. I mean, he damaged his car just trying to come through under a yellow. Well, it happens. And uh, unfortunately for Brendan Gaughan, he'll have to take that car to the attention of his... Uh, race team, Randy Anderson doing the crew chief in there. Randy Anderson, of course, just a little note, one of the most famous off-road racing crew chiefs for many years. Helped Walker Evans win races in the Baja, won the 1,000, the 500 numerous times, and of course, uh, Randy's been a mechanic of the year in the Mickey Thompson Off-Road Championship Grand Prix. But as we turn to NASCAR now, his driver, Brendan Gaughan, who has really flavored himself with the NASCAR Winston Racing Series and uh, the NASCAR Winston West Series, actually has a couple of rides in the NASCAR Crafts and Truck Series, learning a lot about pavement. And we're taking a look now at Davey Lee Linegar's Remax Chevrolet. Of course, Linegar is the owner of Remax International, America's largest real estate corporation. And there's Davey Lee getting out. 
You know, they fit him, David. They're talking a lot about this uh, hot air balloon ride he took. He had to wear a Russian cosmonaut suit for the altitude that they were at, traveling at over 185 miles an hour in the jet stream. What? There's That's not enough. Wild. There's not enough thrill in NASCAR wins in the West. He's <laughs> yes, got to go up in a balloon him. in a cosmonaut suit. Well, you know their motto, above the rest, and that's the way they go. Looks like Davey Lee is okay. That's a good sign. So we're happy to report that Davey is out of the race car. Everything looks to be okay. Always will have a smile on his face. Davey Linegar, one of the nice guys in the NASCAR Winston West Series. And look at that. He's probably just figuring out how much it's going to cost him to fix it to come back next week. 100 laps down, 100 to go. We'll be right back with a Forum Marketing 200 from Mesa Marin Raceway. Stay with us. Welcome back. They're still working on the track, and into the pits comes the cars. The number 16 of uh, Sean Woodside is in as well as Brendan Gaughan. And there's the work going on in the Orleans Hotel Casino Chevrolet. Looks like he's got major cosmetic damage. There's Randy Anderson directing traffic down there. And now Jason Small comes in. Kevin Richards comes in. They're out. Here comes Woodside out now. Joe Bean makes his way down. And then Woodside pops back out on the racetrack. Guess what? Lap 101. Guess who's your leader? Number 16, Sean Woodside. Mr. Golf Cart. So, uh, Sean in the Napa Senior, Napa Auto Parts, Chevrolet, Monte Carlo out in front. Well, Larry, there is a lot of work to be done right now, not only in the pits with the cars, but on the track. And from Joe Bean's point of view, we know that's Davy Lee Linegar, the number 57 car. And I'm not sure who the other car is. They tangle. And getting T-boned is Mike Chase, the 18 car. Unfortunate situation there. Chase and Lindiger come together and take a look at the number 57 car, the Remax car, David Lee Lindiger. And right there, he tries to pull off what I assume get out of the racing line. And Sammy Potashnik, number 65, and Brendan Gaughan, number 20, take a hit as well. There's 65, Sammy Potashnik, and here comes Brendan Gaughan trying to sneak through and getting tagged huge. Look at the back right tire. It's not over yet, folks. Bumper cars at its best here. Unfortunate situation for the number 20 car, Brendan Gaughan out of Las Vegas, Nevada, the Orleans Hotel and Casino Chevrolet Monte Carlo. Brendan Gaughan has got his work cut out for him. The owner of the car is Walker Evans. The crew chief is Randy Anderson. And here comes the Remax car, number 57. Well, yeah, there's some work to be done on that. The uh, Remax International Chevy Monte Carlo, David Lee Linegar out of Castle Rock, Colorado, taking uh, some strong hits as well. Bill Sedgwick follows the pace car. Bill Sedgwick, boy, is this going to bring back some memories. We talked about him earlier. He's the winningest driver here at Mason Ren Raceway. And I believe he's got six victories at this racetrack, this half-mile track. He's had them from driving for Wayne and Connie Spears. He's had them driving for just about every group of top-notch Winston West racers that have been around. The NASCAR Winston West Series, really one of the best-run series on the NASCAR circuit. These guys have a great time, and they travel all over the western United States. Fact, David, the inaugural year, they were at the Brickyard, and Bill Sedgwick and Ron Hornaday almost made the qualifying spot for that. But now we're getting back to racing action before our marketing 200, and it's back old-school week here as Bill Sedgwick leads him into one. Sedgwick, number 44, followed by Sean Woodside in the number 16 car, and the number 23 car is Brandon Ash. One, two, three. Bill Sedgwick has not won a race in a long time. This would be so uplifting for his career, and Sean Woodside knows he's got his hands full now. He's got a guy out in front who really knows his way around Mesa Marin Raceway as he works his way down into turn number one. Bill Sedgwick out front. Racing, well, his uh, career goes back to 1980, at least in NASCAR, Winston West. He's 45 he is years old. Young. This young. Guy, this guy is young. He looks like Dick Clark, I'm telling you. He has won 16 times, a rookie of the year back in 1989, two times champion of Winston West in 91 and 92, and he is hanging on right now. He's got a, a Tiger youngster. by the tail is what he's got. He's got Sean Woodside all over him, and here comes bad Butch Gilliland running in spot number three. Brandon Ash right behind him, Jason Small. Boy, this is the old and the new going at it right now here at Baseball Raceway. Lap number 108 of 200 in the Forum Marketing 200 on a gorgeous night here at Mason Road Raceway. Woodside now applying the pressure. Here comes Gilliland, and here comes Jason Small with a huge ball of steam going after Brandon Ash. Into turn number one, Sedgwick. 
followed by Woodside. And it is Gilliland not wasting any time at all. I'm telling you what, this is a great battle up front. Bill Sedgwick, does this bring back memories? There's people in the Grand Zans who saw Billy win his first race here. Sean Woodside, who was running the 07 car last year, now is in the Bill McAnally Napa Chevrolet running in spot number two. And the nemesis of the NASCAR Winston West Series, Butch Gilliland. He can win him at any time. He's got the Ralph's entry powered up. It looks like he's going to try to make a bid for the win. 90 laps to go in the Foil Marketing 200. NASCAR Winston West racing right here at Mesa Marin Raceway on a gorgeous summer evening. Oh, being pressured by Woodside right now. It Woodside is. all over him down on the inside, David. Woodside making the inside line. Let's see if he can make it stick. Oh, man, as Woodside got that Napa Chevrolet hooked up. Meanwhile, Billy Cedric doesn't want nothing to do with it. He wants to get away, and there's Harvick now. Number three is Steve Partengay. Number 76, if you can make out a number, is John Young. And oh, they tap. And luckily, there was already damage to the car, so he really won't be able to tell if there's any new damage to that car. Here's the battle for the lead. It is still Bill Sedgwick out in front. How about this? Sedgwick, figure eight champion, Saga Speedway, Santa Clarita, California. Those are some good old days. You betcha. The old Saturday night Saga Speedway, one third of a mile, flatter than a pancake and rough as you know what on these drivers. And here comes your lead now. It's going to change as Sean Woodside will take the Napa Martin Senior Chevrolet low to the inside, trying to get the fender out in front of Bill Sedgwick. Sedgwick says, son, I ain't done with this series yet. I'll take the lead. Thank you very much. Sedgwick goes into three as your leader. Sedgwick can not only drive, he's a great mechanic as well. He knows his way around a car. Crew chief the first year for Ron Hornaday when Hornaday drove the Spears Manufacturing Chevrolet. Uh, Chevy pickup truck in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, or what was called then the NASCAR Super Truck Series. And boy, I'll tell you what, Sedgwick knows not only how to set these cars up, he also knows how to be very patient with tires. We talked about tires at the top of the show. This guy drives with an eggshell under the accelerator. If anybody can save the tires, you're looking at the guy out front. Bad Billy Sedgwick out of Acton, California. How about this? He was the tire changer for racing legend Herschel McGriff. Yeah, there's he's. Uh, I'm, you're looking at history right here. Let's go on board with Jerry Kane from Canyon Country, California. Number 71, American International Travel Forum Marketing Chevrolet Monte Carlo. And in front of him is John Young aboard that bashed up number 76 car, but still running strong. Well, Jerry Kane has teamed up with a class act for marketing, uh, the world leader in direct marketing, and they've given a good ride. He's putting in a good show. I remember him as a jet ski racer. Now he's gone to four wheels out of the water and really hounding John Young. There's the two going at it. This is just a great race both in the front of the pack and mid-pack right now. There is action all over the track. There's a pump. Yes, there is a race going on here tonight. Jerry Kane has a problem in the Foral Marketing number 71. Jerry Kane looks like a right rear tire or right front tire has gone down. NASCAR is not throwing a yellow flag yet. Kane, under his own power, will come down on the pit road. That is not a major at all. They'll just go ahead and change that tire for Jerry Kane. He was having a good night. Hopefully, he can get back into this thing. I don't think there's a tire on that rim. I don't know. I don't think so either. Let me tell you something else. As Larry Collins pointed out earlier in the evening, there has been more times than not that a driver has been down either one or two laps and come back to win here at Mason Marin Raceway because you can lose a lap in a heartbeat. Although this is an oval track, there's a lot of twists and turns. I'll tell you, you never know the outcome until the checkered flag flies. Let's take a look. 76, John Young with an exposed door panel, and Je 71, Jerry Kane moves right up on him, and that's where he probably cut his front right tire. Here he comes into the turn, and he loses traction and starts drifting high, and you know there's a problem right there. The tire's flat, he's drifting, and number 71, Jerry Kane, is going to the pits to change the tire. On board we go. There's the hit. And right here, the tire goes flat, and he has very little control into the turn. And number six, Wayne Jacks. His car has finally expired, but he put on a great show. Congratulations for him. I'll tell you, he's had a tough night, but he's given the, the fans their money's worth. We'll be right back with the Forum Marketing 200, and we'll get underway with Green Flag Racing.
Welcome back to Bakersfield, California, and the Mesa Marin Raceway hosting the Forum Marketing 200. Larry Nastin, Brent Weber, I'm David Stanfield, and unfortunately, we've gone under the yellow again. This is the eighth time, and the light's flashing on the pace car, so we've got at least one and a half more laps to go, and they are working on the track with a little quick dry. A little spill from Wayne Jacks, the car number six, having his fair share of problems tonight. In the pits right now, let's go down to Brent Weber, who is with Bill Sedgwick's Gary Ide. He's been running up there pretty much all night long. Now it's down to a sprint. Yeah, you know, we've been hanging in there. Bill's doing a really good job tonight. The Hoosier tires are running really good. We're just going to play out our strategy and hope it wins out at the end. All right, you can tell me now. I won't tell anybody else what is your strategy. Our strategy is to right pedal down all the way to the end. No, we're going to take on another set of tires probably at lap 140 or so. Now, a couple of cars have been running pretty well out there, but it's been a lot of messes to avoid as he's pretty much stayed clear of all the shrapnel out there. Yeah, Bill's a good driver. You know, he's driven a long time, and he knows what he's doing out there. He does his job, and we try and do our job in here, and, you know, it all comes together. One thing for Bill, he knows how to win at this track, right? You guys remember how to do that together, don't you? Yeah, you know, we've won here a bunch together as a team. This team's been together for a while, and we just like working together. And they like winning together. Bill Sedgwick has been racing Winston West since 1980 and has won 16 times looking for a green right now. The head at Dodge Intrepid has pulled down onto the pit road. We are about ready to go. Bill Sedgwick at the number 44, the DuPont Stainmaster car from Acton, California, will set the pace. And he gets a great start and gets about two car lengths on Sean Woodside as they head to one. They've got to dive into that first turn, turn number one and two. On the inside was the slower lap back markers, so it's number 44 Sedgwick, 16 Woodside, one Killeland. And Butch Gilliland really doing well in that number one car. They've kind of been hanging around the whole night. I'm a little surprised that Woodside hasn't tried to apply himself more right now because he knows he's on good tires. Sedgwick got two tires on the, the yellow before, but here comes Gilliland now. He's given Sean Woodside all he can handle into three and four. Take a look at that. The battle for second spot right there. The number 16 blue car, that is Sean Woodside, and the number one car, Butch Gilliland. Let's take a look at the track records. Five races this year, and for Woodside, he has one win. For Sedgwick, well, he's got a top five and a top ten. And for Butch Gilliland, he has only two top ten finishes this year. And Larry, I don't think he's happy with that. But uh, he still has not had a season of Butch Gilliland's caliber. But it looks like it's coming back because he's been hanging around the front. On board we go, number 77, Joe Bean, San Diego, California. Rudolph Food, CPR, Ford Taurus. A little bit more noise and more G-forces than a video game. And <laughs> he gives us an exciting point of view. We go on board one more time. He is racing like he's going after the lead. It's dual red up front, 44, Bill Sedgwick, number one, Butch Gilliland, then the number 16 of Sean Woodside. 136 laps completed. We are under green, racing at speed. Let's take a look what's happening. A couple of the slower rider drivers are getting uh, that uh, passing flag uh, uh, to start finish line, but uh, it's such a quick track. A little bit different, you know. We, we, we see many different flags and many different automobile racing uh, type uh, styles of racing. That flag with the uh, blue and the yellow stripe down the middle just means hold your line, leaders are coming up on you. It's not really a move over flag. It's just to let them know leaders are coming. The leader would much rather have you hold your line than try to do anything to get out of their way because at their momentum, they uh, they may end up getting in the rack or collecting you. So here we go. Top three drivers coming down the front straight away. David, this is shaping up to be a wild one to the finish. We've got just a about 62 or three laps to go in this one. And right now, Bill Sedwick, who got in front just before the halfway mark, and he has been looking strong ever since. Butch Gilliland still running in spot number two with Sean Woodside in spot number three. They're checking out. Sedgwick, the Chevy Monte Carlo, the number 44 red car. He's 45 years old out of Acton, California, two-time series champion, former Winston West Rookie of the Year back in 1989. He is a veteran. He's got it all under control right now. He's watching his mirrors. I think right now the big thing that uh, Butch Gilliland and Sean Woodside have to understand, and I'm sure they do, 
is that Bill Sedwick is very good on equipment and he's very good on tires. We talked about that a little bit earlier when Cedric went to the lead. He drives like he's got an eggshell under the accelerator and believe me, that helps. Woodside now makes a move on Butch Gilland down the front straightaway. He'll put the Napa Chevrolet in spot number two. Did Sean Woodside make the move or did Butch Gilliland miss his breaking point? We'll find out to see if Butch can fight right back. Stay with us. Welcome back to Bakersfield, California, NASCAR, Winston West Series, race number six, the Forum Marketing 200, lap number 141. We continue with a green flag flying and lots of racing action. In the front of the pack, we've got Bill Sedgwick leading this race, car number 44 in the back. We've got some action going on. Steve Portengay, car number three, followed by Austin Cameron, number 12, and the number 77 car, Joe Bean. You know, there's money to be made no matter how you finish. You are not kidding, and it pays all the way back. We gave $50,000 away earlier, earlier this evening, and uh, Mark Rogers from the R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company came down, passed out that money, and that was very nice and very well appreciated. And, of course, as we told you, Mike Chase took $10,000, Sean Woodside $6,000, Brandon Ash took home $4,000, Austin Cameron $3,750, and Steve Portingay, who's in this battle, took a cool $3,500 home, and Joe Bean, $3,250, and it went on from there. So they've been paying these guys off. Winston West got some money in it, and we got some racing going on. We've got a new leader right now. No, he take, retakes the lead. Bill Sedgwick, number 44, trying that outside line, trying to hold off Sean Woodside, who's underneath him on the and 16 car. Woodside needs to be a little bit more cautious because he went very low on that racetrack, and that car started to buck and get a little bit loose on him. Sedgwick's not going to make the mistake. If Sedgwick gets past here, it's because Woodside's got more tire than he does or better position. Woodside will... Or, uh, Sedgwick's not going to jeopardize his position, and he may let Woodside go ahead and run out in front for a little while. There's about 54 laps to go in this one. This is the time where the crew chiefs are getting nervous. They're saying, boys, get it going. There's no more time. If you're going to do something, do it now, and hopefully they can stay in front for the next 50 laps. Remember, there will be no more scheduled pit stops unless we have a major yellow for many laps. But I see some smoke coming out of the back of Woodside's Chevrolet. That's not a good sign, David. A little bit of blue smoke. He's a car number 16, the Chevy Monte Carlo. The 28-year-old out of Saugus, California, has won in Winston West six times. He's up against the veteran, the 45-year-old out of Acton, California, in the red number 44 Chevy Monte Carlo. And now and the oh, smoke that's really not coming good. out now. So uh, obviously there's a huge problem over there, and uh, Brent Weber will get us a report on what exactly is going on with the number 16. I'm going to give a nod to him. He's been running his tail off today. And this may be, oh, there. There is, you know, he can see it. Woodside can see it in his cab. I would imagine he's going to pull that in because it looks like he's got a little bit of flame in the cab, and Woodside is going to have to pull this thing down onto pit road. And a tough break for Sean Woodside. And he's going to pull it right down here on the front straightaway and do the smart thing and get out. He's not totally off the racing line. Yellow flag comes out. And Woodside is checking things out right now. Don't know if he... Is this, <laughs> there's some flame in there, it looks like. Yeah, he's leaving. <laughs> he's out of here. Yeah, right over. Next. Tough break for Sean Woodside. We really thought he was going to have something for him tonight, and he did. There's a problem developed in that Napa Brake Chevrolet, and he is upset. I would get that uh, fire stinger store over there because we got a camera in there. That's exactly right. In-car camera. And the... What was that? Car started to take off. I was rolling a little bit, and unfortunately, they're trying to get it done right now. Tough luck for Sean Woodside. Second fastest qualifier with an electrical fire, looks like. He is out of competition. We'll be right back for more of the Forum Marketing 200. Welcome back to Bakersfield, California, the Mesa Marin Raceway Forum Marketing 200. Sean Woodside from Saugus, California, walking off the track, very disappointed, an electrical fire, and he is out of competition. He had a chance at winning tonight and gaining some more points. Okay, here comes a strategy move right now. Sedgwick's going in the pits, so is Gilland, so is Brandon Ash. 
who's going to take what side tires and where. Watching the crews go to work right now, looks like they're all going to do right side tires, and this is going to be a race to get out of the pits. Remember, this is for track position with less than 50 laps to go in the Foral Marketing 200. Oh, and Austin Cameron's going to come out first. Austin Cameron, the number 12 Chevy Monte Carlo, who qualified on the sixth row, qualified but Joe, 12th. Joe Bean, the number 77, did not go in the pit. And this may be a strategy move here. Now we're going to find out about tires and everything. Joe Bean did not come into the pits, the number 77. He stayed out on the racetrack. And this may prove to be either a hero move or maybe a huge mistake, David. Joe Bean's putting in a good show. Let's see if he can handle Austin Cameron on fresh tires. Now, down to the pits we go with Brent Weber, who's standing by a very disappointed Sean Woodside. You were running awfully well there. What happened? Saving tires, and uh, I don't know. I looked over, I saw smoke, and all of a sudden the whole wiring loom went up in flames, and uh, MSD boxes, everything went up. We noticed you were still, you were trying to get something out of there. We didn't know if you had a... I was trying to put it out when I was going around, but I couldn't get it out and it started to burn my hands. So, you know, I was trying to, trying to keep it running. It was still running. I figured if I could get it out, maybe the wires would stop burning. So, but one of them days in Napa Chevrolet was good. The guys had good pit stops and we're just getting ready to go with about 30 to go. We're just playing with Cedric out there, having a good time. And unfortunately, those things happen. Tough luck for Sean Woodside out of Saugus, California, the Napa Martin Senior Chevrolet Monte Carlo out of competition. And our leader right now under yellow is Joe Bean. And the question is, can Joe Bean make it work for him tonight? Joe Bean has done what he did the last time he won here. This, If he wins tonight, will be his second win. He has used pit strategy to win here at Mason Marin before, a very similar thing. He got tires on the previous yellow, stayed out of the racetrack, and gained a ton of track position. Well, is that going to be enough to win the Foral Marketing 200? We're going to find out because we're going green. Green flag flies. Look at the number 77 car. Basically yellow out of San Diego, California, Joe Bean. And right behind him is Austin Cameron, Brandon Ash, Jason Small, and Kevin Harvick. All heading down the back straightaway over 120 miles an hour, then quickly on the binders. Roll it through turn number three and stand on it in turn number four. And Joe Bean's got a car length and a half as they head out to turn one. Take a look. Brandon Ash is being pressured by Jason Small right now. Good racing as we see Brandon Ash pressuring Austin Cameron. Jason Small getting a little worked up there by Kevin Harvick, but your leader, Joe Bean, may have the secret to success here at Mason Marin Raceway. The Foral Marketing 200 has 40 laps to go to find out who will win this Memorial Day Classic Weekend at Mason Marin. And the number 23 car, Brandon Ash on the inside, looking to take over the second spot. And he'll pull that off. They're going to Austin Cameron now going to the outside of Jason Small. Small now dives back to the inside, takes the lane away. Here comes Harvick now. We got a great five-car battle for the lead. Our leader is Joe Bean, number 77. And the 23 of Brandon Ash making his move now, trying to get the lead. It'll be the first time he's led tonight. Brandon Ash out in front of the number 23, Big Daddy's Barbecue Sauce out in front, putting the sizzle where it counts. Now take a look, Austin Cameron, the number 12 car, thinks he can overtake uh, Jason. Joe Bean in the number 77 car, looking to see if his tires are strong enough. Well, maybe Joe Bean's tires weren't that good, but track position for him was paramount. And if he can sit in this position and maybe salvage a top five out of this, that would be great. But here comes Harvick, everybody on a charge now. But if they don't make some moves and get around Joe Bean, Brandon Ash is going to check out of this thing. Ed Ash, the owner and engine builder and crew chief, watching his son lead the NASCAR Winston West Series. Brandon Ash, car number 23, followed by the 77 car of Joe Bean. There's Austin Cameron, the number 12 car in the Chevy Monte Carlo. 37 laps to go in the Foral Marketing 200, and Brandon Ash is checking out. Very impressed as well with Jason Small, the number 14 car he's putting on a charge. He's now moved it into spot number two as he gets by Joe Bean. Austin Cameron trying to do the same thing. A little love tapping going on between Eric Norris. He taps the side of Kevin Harvick. No harm, no foul. They'll continue to race. There's Bill Cedric, the number 44. Cedric into the inside of Eric. Oh, man, he got way to the inside. 
of Eric Norris, and he bumped him a little bit, but Norris did a great job of driving and saved it. He gets sideways again. Look at Norris in the Jan King car, and here comes Butch Gilliland now as he dives down. Lots of bumping going oh, on. Oh, man. Harvick currently running in fourth. In third, Austin Cameron. Is this Memorial Day or Fourth of July? Because there's some fireworks on the racetrack. These guys are really running hard. Cameron goes way high in turn number two. That's going to put Joe Bean and Bill Sedgwick back. Here comes Sedgwick. He'll overtake Bean now. Sedgwick moving up very strong, very fast. And here comes Steve Portingay in the number three. So Portingay. Things have temporarily sorted themselves out. We're going to take a quick break. Let's set the field. Brandon Ashley's Jason Small, Kevin Harvick, Butch Gilliland, and Bill Sedgwick. We'll be right back with more action from Mesa Marin. Brandon Ash, car number 23 out front, according to our leaderboard, followed by the number 14, Chevy Monte Carlo, Jason Small, the number seven car. Highest he's been all race long. We expect him to do real well, Kevin Harvick. There's, he's currently running third. There is still 22 or 23 laps to go in this one. It's quite possible. Or actually, excuse me, there's going to be 30 laps to go in this one. Quite possible Kevin Harvick can make a move. Here comes Harvick now on the outside of Butch Gilliland. Well, it's Gilliland uh, trying to make the move on Harvick as well. Mm -hmm. Harvick's in third, Gilliland is in fourth, and you can't count out Sedgwick in fifth. Now, this is a good top five here going after Jason Small. Door handle to door handle as they round turn number two. Looks like uh, Butch Gilliland's going to have the advantage, but Harvick just sticks his foot all the way to the pavement in that Pontiac Grand Prix as he tries to make this pass stick, but he can't do it on Gilliland. Gilliland's actually going to get the position from Harvick. They collide. They go into each other. Nobody gets sideways, but, man, are they trading paint. Absolutely great racing here. Gilliland and Harvick going at it. Harvick taking that high line and holding tough. But, meanwhile, everybody's forgotten about the youngster out in front, Brandon Ash, from Imca, Oregon, all the way out in front, number 23. If Brandon were to win this, it would be his first victory trip, and he has checked out. Look at the lead he's got over Jason Small. And Small has put in a fantastic race here at Mason Red. There's Gilliland running in spot number three, and Woodside running in spot number four. Car number 14, Jason Small is currently running in second, and he has got some trouble behind him. They are moving up quick. Butch Gilliland, car number one, is currently in third. Car number seven, Kevin Harvick. I don't know if anybody's going to have anything for Brandon Ash. He, bit, he bided his time and worked well. He's going to have just about 26 laps to wrap this thing up, roughly 13 miles of running here at the Foral Marketing 200. Gilliland now moves his race car into spot number two. He takes the Ralph's Coca-Cola entry, passes Jason Small. There is a lapper in between Brandon Ash, car number 23, and Butch Gilliland right now going to try to make a quick move around the number 71 car. Gilliland does not want to come in second. No, I don't think so. He wants to go for the win. The problem is that Brandon Ash has got clean racetrack in front of him, so to speak, and everybody racing immediately in back of him is racing for position. 25 laps to go. To make that 24 to go. On board we go with Jerry Kane from Canyon Country, California, number 71. You can see the POV there. Very aggressive is Butch Gilliland. Butch has uh, set the fastest track record here, and he's moving up through the pack. You've got to watch out for him. And there is still a long way to go. I mean, we're talking about cutting these laps down, but we still have some time to go. Gilliland has shown the promise that he can work his tires and work up there and get to the front. And here comes Small now as he moves back into position. So we'll see what happens right now. Nine cars are on the lead lap, leading Brandon Ash. Number one, Butch Gilliland in spot number two. Jason Small in spot number three. Kevin Harvick in spot number four. Bill Sedgwick rounds out the top five. Steve Portingay in spot number six. Eric Norris in spot number seven. And Austin Cameron in spot number eight. 
Joe Bean in spot number nine. So here's the battle for the lead right now. Brandon Ash is our leader, going to try an outside move possibly, but right on his tail is Butch Glillen, car number one. Butch has made some nice moves moving through the back markers right now, and he's pulling right up on Brandon Ash and rear bumper. And take a look, inside line. He's going to the inside, but Brendan Gaughan is right there. Brendan did a great sportsman-like thing and just held his line. Now we've got 20 to go, a car within two car lengths of going to the lead. It's one thing to pass him or get there. It's another thing to pass him. Brandon Ash out in front in the number 23, Big Daddy's Barbecue Sauce for Taurus, the driver from Oregon, and he's a youngster working against one of the best in the business, Butch Gilliland. There's Small and Sedgwick going at it. Sedgwick giving him a little love tap. Sedgwick now tries to go to the inside. He may have Small hooked up. And he does. Right now in fifth spot is Kevin Harvick in fourth spot, Bill Sedgwick. Sedgwick has actually moved up to third spot. It's Jason Small in fourth, but our leader, the pack, is running after number 23, Brandon Ash. Can he hold on to his position? Because Butch is after him right now. A man that has won 11 times in this form of racing. He's got so much experience, dating back to 1987. That's exactly right. He's also the man who has uh, worked here the most. He's got the most start, too. This is his 26th start. He won the last two events that we've run here at Masonman Raceway. So he's no stranger to Victory Circle. Brandon Ash, on the other hand, is hearing every tick, feeling every bump with less than 20 to go. 17, actually 16 laps to go for Brandon Ash, the driver out of Oregon. He's got some heavy pressure on him now with Butch Gilliland in the number one Rouse Coca-Cola entry, running in spot number two. Brandon is doing a great job right now as we watch him hold his line. And composure. 184 laps and counting, and the... The Ash family right now is nervous. They're biting their nails. Oh, you can bet Ed's on top of the toolbox just four feet taller than he is right now. That'd make him eight feet. But he's a great guy and a good motor builder. These guys really know how to build them. And Ed Ash right now is going to be a happy camper, even if Brandon were to get past. What a great race for him. He spent more time in the lead in this race than I can ever remember him in a NASCAR Winston West Series race leading laps. But now he's seemingly gaining a car length or two every lap. So we'll see what happens as they now continue to pass some lap traffic. People who had problems earlier, and he's passing the 05 of John Metcalf, who was running in the top five before he had his flat tire and problem down in turn number three. Now Gilliland has closed the gap. He's well within striking distance. 13 laps remain in the Foral Marketing 200 here at Mason Marin Raceway, Bakersfield, California. You're watching it on Speed Vision. Car number 23, Brandon Ash, the Ford Thunderbird. Out of Oregon, he has 28 races under his belt in Winston West, and he is being now really pressured by a man with 117 races and a couple of championships. And Sammy Potashnik played pick right there for Brandon Ash. Brandon did a great job using Sammy. Sammy struggling tonight. He's leading the rookie of the year points, but Sammy not having one of his better nights. Uh, the driver out of Missouri, the WWE transport PTI transportation Chevrolet Monte Carlo is our rookie of the year leader back out front the young gun Brandon Ash 21 years old trying to hold off the veteran Butch Gilliland 41 years old lap number 190 10 to go stay with us out on the track car number 14 Jason Small is being watched by his crew Ken Small Donnie Hubble they're interested. He's currently running fifth. He's one of the young guns, but out front, the young gun that is leading this race is Brandon Ash, the 21-year-old. He's trying to hold off none other than a legend, the legend Butch Gilliland. He is uh, talking to Kevin Green, the NASCAR publicist, uh, earlier in the week. Kevin said this might be the best group of young racers that the NASCAR Winston West Series has had, and I've got to agree. Brandon Ash is doing a fantastic job. He's got a seasoned veteran right behind him. We have eight laps to go in the contest, and he hasn't shuddered a bit. I would have to say right now, if Gilliland got around him, he would have to do something very cunning, very sly. Gilliland, that's not, that's not past him. He's that good a driver. But Brandon Ash is really taking care of his tires. He's not overdriving the car, and he's working 
working it well. There you see Steve Portingay and Austin Cameron and Jerry Kane getting into it. Down the back straightaway into turn number three. Seven laps to go. Seven laps to go. Our leaders, car number 23, followed by Butch Gillen, car number one. The 44 car is currently in third, and that is Bill Sedgwick, followed by Kevin Harvick, the number seven car, and Jason Small, number 14 machine. There'll be six laps to go now as Butch Gilliland is only two car lengths off the pace of Brandon Ash. Ed Ash on top of the toolbox, and you can bet right now he's about ready to just jump for joy as he watches his young son lead one of the best veterans we have in the NASCAR Winston Racing or NASCAR Winston West Series, and Bill Sedgwick's back there too. So he's racing a couple of champions now, and Ash is really working himself strong as we go with five to go. Brandon Ash, one of three rookies to win the Bud Pole Award at a race in 1998. He came within inches of winning at Sears Point, just running out of gas before the finish line. Uh, he may have some trouble now because here comes Gilliland. Gilliland bumps him a little bit. Here comes Sedgwick. Three, going to be three together going into turn number three. Gilliland goes alongside. Sedgwick will follow him in. That'll put Brandon Ash out just a little bit. And a love tap from Gilliland might have been all he needed. However, Brandon Ash is not given up. Gilliland has got the same situation with tires as everybody else. Three wide, tell the next straight away. Ash gets the side of the wall, keeps it going. Ash has dropped a third. And look who's moved into the lead, Sedgwick. Bad Billy Sedgwick out of Acton, California. Two to go. Here comes Gilliland, deep break into turn number one, and Sedgwick does a 360. Oh, man, this is going to be some fireworks now. Sedgwick has no way to regain it. Looks like Gilliland got into his left or right, yeah, left rear quarter. And we'll see what happens on the replay. We will show it to you. Lap number 199 is out. One lap to go. This is it, Butch Gilliland, car number one, is our leader. Here he comes looking for the checkered flag. Gilliland works it out of turn number three into turn number four. Checkered flag flies, it's Butch Gilliland, 41 years old out of Chino Hills, California. Three in a row. In the Ford Taurus, and what a great race for him. Brandon Ash put in a great run. So did Bill Sedgwick, but the win goes to the Ralph Century, Butch Gilliland, as he bumps and grinds his way into the lead. As he cools it down now, there's Brandon Ash, and Ash not at all happy as he makes it very well known to Butch Gilliland that he didn't appreciate that love tap, but that's part of racing. Oh my, Ash and Sedgwick probably upset. Look at Butch Gilliland, right to victory circle. He's done it before. We'll be right back. The Forum Marketing 200 has been brought to you by Forum Marketing Services, the world leader in direct marketing. By the new Dodge, it's about change. And by Mesa Marin Raceway, home of the NASCAR October Classic, October 14th through the 17th. And that is Butch Gilliland, the number one car, winning for the third year in a row, stepping out of his car, actually climbing out his 21-year-old Brandon Ash, a second place finish, fantastic job. And Kevin Harvick, very consistent, but you know, he would have loved to win this race. Coming in fourth, Bill Sedgwick, and fifth, Jason Small. Let's go down to Brent Weber, who is with fourth place finisher, Sedgwick. Winningest guy this event has seen, thought he had another one, a lap from it, and uh, something happened. Yeah, it's tough. You know, I got by Butch at the start finish line. That made me the leader. You know, you don't take out the leader, but, you know, I might have squeezed him a little bit. I had no intentions of going to the bottom of the racetrack at all. Um, I was going to run through the middle of the racetrack, give him a little bit of room, but uh, he took a little more than, than what I gave him. But, you know, my hat's off to Tim Buckley and this whole Vintage Motorsports team. They did a great job. You know, I felt like I drove good out there. We were off. I went a little bit too much on the front sway bar, and it was a little tight in the center of the corner. But uh, it's a good run for DuPont Stainmaster and um, Monte, the Monte Carlo and Hoosier tires. It was just, it was a lot of fun. You guys looked like you were right up there in the class all day, and it, and I got a feeling that uh, 
you know, your season almost started today. It looked like you were right at home. Well, our season started good back in Tucson, <laughs> leading 85 laps and, you know, leading the most laps, and um, we ended up finishing third. But it started off and it's been downhill ever since. We'll get it right. We're going to be going up to Monroe, Washington, and uh, Portland, and some of these other tracks that uh, we've got a lot of success on. Looking forward to doing that. But it's, like I said, I'm just I'm really happy for Tim Buckley and the Vintage Motorsports team. It's, it's, uh, it's a good run for us. All right, it was. He was there heading down to that final flag, guys. Well, a very gracious Bill Sedgwick uh, suffering a fourth place finish. It could have been a win here, but what a battle with Butch Gilliland, number one, and Brandon Nash, number 23. And in the end, it was number one, Butch Gilliland, winning today. He is standing by in the pits with our own Brent Weber. Let's go down to him right now. Brent? If anybody knows their way to this place right here, it's you three times in a row. Yeah, there's a lot of tough cars here tonight. You know, um, Sedgwick there at the end uh, came up, and uh, Ed or um, Brandon Ash was real strong there at the end. But we had fresh tires on it, and we were pretty quick, and we just wanted to wait for the last 10 laps. And uh, we got a pretty awesome car and an awesome team. Ralph Food for less thanks for making it happen. I know one thing, Brandon Ash's team, there's a 21-year-old kid getting a taste of first, but luring in his rearview mirror was a guy who uh, has been on this track more than any Winston West, Winston West driver. I know that uh, you had a confident feeling then, didn't you? You know, we did. You know, um, he was he was in front of us, but he was just sliding her back end around a lot, getting looser and looser. And we had four fresh tires. We were stuck like glue. So it was a matter of time where he's going to slip up and we we're going to get around him. Now you have this great big burden for next year. That's try to win four in a row in this event. Well, you know, uh, we got equipment like this. It won't be hard to do. Congratulations to Butch Gilliland winning this race and moving from 10th to 8th in the overall point standings. Here's a look at the top five. Mike Chase, 886 points, followed by Sean Woodside and Brandon Ash tied for second. Then comes Austin Cameron and Steve Portengay. This has been the Forum Marketing 200. On behalf of Brent Weber and Larry Naston, I'm David Stanfield. Thanks for being a part of NASCAR Winston West Racing at Mesa Marin. <laughs>